tracks, and one of them could be found right here on Colburn Mill Road. Officials have cleaned out the ditch and widened it in an effort to reduce flooding. Here in Crisfield, folks are feeling the effects as rain and high tide have covered the streets with inches of water. They say it's going to help them respond to emergencies much faster. We're talking about drones. The person who was charged is Cesar Rios Martinez, which you can see right behind me. The 35 year old is a pastor at a church in Salisbury. As we know, this is a hot topic on the eastern shore, which is why supporters of this bill want to get this piece of legislation in front of lawmakers as soon as possible. Windy and rainy here, and I want to show you guys how big the waves are right now. Take a look. They are just humongous. Now that's because high tide was around 1122 this morning. They would get their throats cut and buried in the backyard. Just again, some disturbing details that we're learning about this case. Leading scientists to believe this is the earliest discovery of enslaved people here in Delaware. Brooke, a Kent County judge, sentenced Cortez Hamilton to 25 years in prison. This comes after he pled guilty to second degree murder for killing his wife, Keisha Hamilton. And the actors here tell me tonight is all about the tricks. No trees. And I actually want to show you around. And joining me now is none other than Matt Baker himself. Hi, Matt. How are you? How are you? This is the mouth I juggle with. Yes, it is. <laughs> Water damage. If you take a look above me, contractors have started removing ceiling tiles and salvage what's left of this roof. Now, we've also heard that there are some slick spots on the road, so just be extra careful if you plan on traveling today. And just to show you that the tips actually paid off, look at what I won. Okay, this unicorn there, I see that. Now, does it, does it have a name? Fluffy. To help veterans with everyday things such as turning on a light switch. Nigel, light. Good boy. Crushing thick sheets of ice. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources sailed through the Chesapeake Bay Wednesday. There are 100 foot boats specially designed to cut through layers of ice. The boats are our ice breaking vessels uh, are what you call shallow draft so that they can go into the uh, the uh, smaller waterways and clear these uh, clear these paths. Clearing pathways to travel to and from Smith Island. It's a lifeline to keep these channels clear so that supply boats, ferries, mail boats can can go back and forth. Captains are constantly monitoring weather and water conditions to determine when to sail. They tell us their busiest times are when the water temperatures dip below freezing, creating sheets of ice over the Chesapeake Bay and making it difficult and at times dangerous for residents and watermen to travel to and from the mainland. Officials tell me some of the ice is up to six inches thick and they expect the water to continue freezing with the cold temperatures. When it gets uh, really bad, we will spend the night at Smith Island on the boat and leave early in the morning and bring them over and take them back. Wind, tide and snow playing a factor. Despite the harsh winter conditions, they brave the cold and ensure residents can get home safely and even acting as the ferry when other boats can't get through. We pretty much become the ferry. We take passengers and freight, medicines, anything they need. They have a difficult job, but also a very That's, important one. It's a fun job. It's a fun job. <laughs> Lisette Nunez, 47 ABC. After four months of investigating, local police and the FBI have finally learned what led to an armored vehicle robbery in Salisbury, resulting in the heist of $1.3 million. This is not the sort of thing that is supposed to happen in a small city. Back in January, police say an armored vehicle driver was filling an ATM at a credit union on Mount Hermon Road when three suspects approached him and demanded money. Two of the suspects began taking money from that vehicle, from the Loomis vehicle, and a third suspect tied the victim's hands and forced him inside that vehicle. All three of these individuals then fled the scene on foot. Fortunately, no one was injured. But all three suspects managed to escape, Consider causing police to launch an investigation by releasing audio from the incident. Hurry up, get over here. Grab the 
In offering a reward, people came forward with tips. We had some information come in uh, through various people. We ran down all those leads. Uh, one of those leads led us to um, at least one of these individuals. Those tips leading to the arrest of these three suspects. 48-year-old Orneth South, 38-year-old Ryan Smith, and 42-year-old Michael Watts. One of them living here locally in Princess Anne, and others as far as New York City and Charlotte. Criminals don't necessarily need to live next to each other to know each other, so across the criminal world, people are connected. One thing all three now have in common are the charges they're facing. They have been charged with the following offenses. Interference with interstate commerce by robbery. Second, use, carry, brandish of a firearm during the, the relation to a crime of violence.